Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nisedal, Norway. I'm here, so you don't have to be. First things first, if you want to have a head start on everybody else, please be a patron on my Patreon page and you will get all my videos some days before the rest of the world. And there will be a lot more reviews, of course, depending on, on, on the results. Now, today uh, we are going to talk about the Phobia RDA from Wendy Wape. This is a 24mm dual coil squonk ready dripper. And as per usual, I will not do a review anymore. I am only going to concentrate on the airflow. And as you see, I've got some better lights. I have got myself a better microphone. Some of you have complained about the sound quality and I hope this will remedy some of it. Now, the airflow on the Phobia. It's been nagging me for a long time since I first saw the pictures of it on the pre-release images. And you know, I always doubt myself. Uh, could I have been wrong? Could this be the simple answer to all my problems, all our problems? So I did a lot of uh, testing in my airflow chamber and I drew some drawings and studied it. And when I actually got the item, well, <clears throat> let's head to close up and study it. <laughs> this is the box it um, it comes in. The um, RDA itself and you get a second barrel. On this uh, second uh, barrel you can you see you can it's it's just a yeah it's just a metal ring and this top is uh, of uh, delrin with uh, holes and uh, nooks and crannies for heat dispersion. Now, that is an indicator. We will come back to it. Let's um, get the um, RDA on a stage and have a closer look at it. These are the three parts that makes up this RDA if you don't uh, consider the uh, extra barrel. Nice inscription and uh, a um, tidy build deck and a, a drip tip. It's um, both drip tip and, and this um, barrel are very very nicely done with, uh, can hardly see it, but, but the top cap is domed so uh, that's nice. Let's look at the deck. Here you can see that in the center under the deck there is this um, uh, gray insulator uh, plastic piece. It's actually a divider splitting the um, the underside of the deck uh, in two. There is a circle in the center and two wings going out left and right, inside, under. If you look very careful now, you can see this divider down here and here, here and here. And yeah, you can see it in the air duct going like so. That is the central divider with the circle here. So if we turn it like this again and think of the air going to the side, it goes now to the divider and it goes up here and it comes up from this uh, hole here too. I call these the two towers. And that is the way of the airflow from the outside to the center to the side up 
and out into the chamber. Let's look at a really quick uh, drawing of this airflow system. So basically the air is entering here through this opening. The air proceeds to hitting this uh, hemisphere and the divider under. And the idea is of course that when the air is hitting this divider that the air will go up here yeah, you notice I'm drawing with pencil. <laughs> There's a reason for that. And the air is coming up here and they want the air to do this so that your coil placed here get the air from this opening and the air from this opening and the air for from this opening and wouldn't it have been marvelous if this was the way it actually works but of course there are problems and we will look at some uh, computer simulations and we will look at um, some stills I will not show you footage from my air airflow chamber this time they reveal too much and uh, I have not any business arrangement with uh, with Wendy Wape and uh, I will not tell them how to fix this so uh, or what the problems are in detail but I will show you what I can show so computer uh, simulations and uh, airflow stills it is This is of course um, a computer simulation in two-dimensional space. Um, it will behave differently in three-dimensional space, but <laughs> under the um, uh, deck of this uh, Phobia RDA, um, well, it's, it's like two dimensions, except for the dividers where the um, uh, where the <coughs> uh, dividers are straight under the two towers. But in real life, we will come back to this of course, uh, the difference is uh, not so big as you might think it is. So let's just watch this uh, flow and notice that uh, although the opening up and down are big, you see that the uh, the flow is narrowing considerably and that is an aspect I have seen again and again when I test the airflow uh, colliding with each other in in uh, in, um, in in what you call it damn in uh, in uh, constricted space constricted space so now you can follow the bubbles and you can see that they are keeping their distance from the divider and that is uh, uh, interesting and uh, there is an explanation for it. Let's look at a real uh, still now. This is just a uh, quick uh, still from an airflow collision. I will not go into the details and what's inside this tube other than that it is a constricted space and there is uh, vapor coming in from left and right. There is a vacuum cleaner going up at 12 o'clock and you can see the air is shooting straight up and straight down in very concentrated beams of, of, of uh, jets of air. And, um, and that's just the way it behaves, although this opening is uh, 10 centimeters wide the jets shooting out of this space is only two centimeter and that is a compression rate i have found holds true in the speeds at which we wape uh, with the air coming in going into a vacuum this 
um, flow illustration uh, illustrates what would have happened with the two towers if the divider had worked as planned. Uh, and to simulate that I had to let in flow from both left and right into one tower. That is not uh, the case in, in the RDA, but anyways, if it were, had worked as uh, planned from Vandiwape, uh, this would be the strange, strange result of the construction. And um, uh, yeah, you would have get uh, plenty of cooling from the underside. Uh, that's not the big issue here. But uh, as I thought very early on, uh, the, uh, the flow uh, would never go horizontal in any form or shape with this construction. And for now, it looks like I'm right. But uh, let's uh, just um, uh, look at uh, how the air actually will behave in this uh, tower construction. Now, because of forces that I won't discuss uh, with you in detail, but under the deck the air is forced to the sides, uh, resulting in a pattern much more like this. And uh, I did these simulations before I went into my airflow chamber to study uh, replicas of the towers themselves. I had to understand a lot of uh, stuff and uh, if you watch my Kennedy uh, airflow, the Kennedy design airflow uh, and core placement tutorial video, uh, uh, you will understand that uh, that analysis was a payoff of my already being studying the phobia. And, um, and uh, I'm sorry but the air actually behaves like this. Uh, there are a main flow behaving uh, some in some case like, like this and there is turbulence you can see by the dots drifting around uh, other places in the two uh, towers. Now let's uh, look at um, something else. Here we can see stills of actual models in the air chamber and pardon me for changing directions <laughs> from time to time but this is of course the right tower this time and um, before you start cheering and uh, jumping up and down uh, it looks like there is air coming in from uh, everywhere and um, well yeah actually it does you have always air uh, coming in, there is no blank spots. But if you fill the tube with wish, wish, visual uh, wape, uh, you, you have no uh, gradation uh, uh, that shows you where the current of where the flow actually goes. So this was just to see where the turbulence is and where the flow is and then it was time to dissect really where is the flow going what's the pattern and once you start pulling back on the amount of vape it crystals itself out and it behaves in real life under real testing conditions in a scale 10 to 1 it behaves almost exactly like the uh, computer simulation um, computer simulations are great for studying uh, air hole openings, not the effects afterwards. And um, well, there are some additional effects in this, but you can see that the concentration of the top 20% of the tower, uh, that there, that's where the um, well 60-70% of air is going. And it's going at a um, about 20 degrees angle upwards. And when you get a really, really good shot of uh, the way um, uh, a good grad graduation of, of vapor in the tower, you can uh, very clearly see how the distribution of flow really is. That uh, just like in the Kennedy, um, opening design you still uh, in spite of there are three major airflow collisions happening in the tower construction and still most of the air is compressed like in a Kennedy duct 
with uh, only a 20% of the flow, uh, only 20% of the opening actually producing direct flow. The rest you see is turbulence uh, coming from the tower. So what I really have proven is that even in on the collision here after clearing the hemisphere uh, or um, half circle here the air does not jump over this ledge or, or wing the air travels no I won't I won't draw that arrow but there is a ratio here let's just uh, satisfy uh, ourselves that the air is generally pushed this way despite having the ability to cross over and go straight up it doesn't do that air does not behave like that so the result is that the air goes up here and it goes in pretty much this angle and when I say the air I mean like 60 70 percent of the air goes out in this area here uh, the wave you see in this area that's just um, that's just random um, turbulence and directionless uh, air more or less but the air is uh, <laughs> sorry the proof is of course in in uh, in what you um, um, the proof is of course in real life when you put your coils in and use it and of course I did even though I had my simulations even though I had my airflow um, studies and I, I, I felt I knew this intimately still I put my coils in where uh, it was recommended in the user manual yeah there is a user manual with this RDA I put my coils there and um, I, I did it because I had observed uh, another effect that I can't mention here that I hoped could really save it. Uh, I was thinking, well, maybe they missed something really, really cool. And I thought uh, it was the cooling from uh, from the towers. But instead, the, the effect could be something else. And yeah, I'm ranting here. But anyways, I put my coils where it was recommended. And that is in this position or lower or yeah, something like this. And in, in a couple of hours with, with uh, using uh, my flat wire coils, that was enough for me that when I cut the cotton and pulled it out this side up to here and up to here was dark brown and this part of the coil uh, of the cotton when I pulled it out uh, it was sort of a dissection <laughs> I love to do that and you could clearly see that that the coil did not get any direct cooling from the underside so that was that so what do you do with it you of course use it as a single coil RDA like so when you do this, you get a um, you get the um, air coming in, cooling it like so, and uh, yeah. So I did that, and the results were just uh, fantastic. And uh, so, instead of showing you how to build it wrong, I will show you now how to build it right to get, uh, you know, for a time for a time when I, when I <laughs> forced myself to wait with the, the coils in this position, I was back into old days. Uh, 
I I burnt my lips after after just uh, three four draws. The the metal on the top of the RDA was so hot, and there was spatter in my mouth, and the vape was hot. And man, that was. Uh, but I forced myself uh, through it, and uh, and I just ripped it out and uh, dissected the coils to see where the cotton was burned, and uh, I was happy. I was right and not wrong. And uh, that the studies of flow and, and computers had had proven that what that this would happen, and it happened. So I put a single coil uh, here. We'll check it out the position in in just a sec. And uh, there it was back again. The cool, nice, mellow, dense, flavor-rich um, wape that that I now have become so uh, accustomed to. So uh, let's put in the coil, and I'll show you. Um, the solution for this RDA. Yeah, here you can see the single coil placement. Uh, if you look at the height of the two towers, that height level should split your coil in two. One half of the coil below it to exploit some of the turbulence coming in from the towers uh, further down. Uh, it's uh, After all, that's 30-40% that's of the air still coming in uh, from that place. Then you use the concentrated, really hard hitting air to hit your coil at, um, well, around and about 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. So that should be uh, the ideal position for your coil. Now, you always wonder what kind of coil is this? And I think it is, yeah, it's a um, 22 gauge uh, hammered very, very flat. Uh, I think it clocks in at 0 0.30 something ohms. Um, and you can also dissect and study your coils. So this coil is uh, rather clean on the um, sides and it have slight burn marks. They will be removed when I just uh, glow it once or twice. But uh, uh, they, uh, they, uh, this one had a bit uh, gunk on top and a bit gunk uh, in the bottom. and. Uh, this position um, should therefore be the one that gives you the most efficient cooling of the coil. So let's just uh, wick this uh, thing up. Uh, yeah, okay, the diameter, um, the diameter, I think it's five millimeter in diameter. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. So uh, that should be uh, very comfortable for also you Clapton coil users uh, to stay in the uh, five to five and a half outer diameter range. Now there is still one little problem. It makes a really nagging whistling sound. Almost like a high pitch shrill sort of thing. But my god, what a flavor. Now this RDA is up there with the best single coil RDAs that there is. It's, it's really, really fantastic in, in flavor now. Sorry about that. I mean, this is, um, yeah, this is like 50 watts or something. Um, the flavor is so balanced and so crispy. It's so dense and not cold, but yeah, lukewarm. Just enough to bring out the bottom notes. Uh, and, and and the crispiness of the of the of the high notes, 
It's so mellow. It's it's so balanced. But man, the sound. <laughs> But you know, when I had it uh, in, in a dual coil configuration, it was so hot. After three draws, I, I actually burned my lips. And as you saw, um, it comes with two barrels. And you know, this, this is, to me, this is a dilemma. Because when you incorporate a second barrel with a plastic top for heat dispersion, they know they have made something. Wandy Wape knew they made something that did not work properly. And so you can say hurrah for them for incorporating the second barrel with the second top. A courtesy from them. But, you know, is it fair to release a product with these kinds of flaws, with this kind of, um, well, should you say, <laughs> uh, ignorance of, of the airflow, and knew it was going to be so hot. Well, <laughs> the dragon, uh, my, my girlfriend, she said, no, no, you, you be kind, you be calm, you, you don't get too excited about it. But um, I will mention it for you, okay, that, uh, that I find it uh, troublesome that I released this RDA. On the other hand, what a fantastic RDA it is when you understand it. So this should absolutely be promoted as a single coil RDA. And uh, and and uh, they should they should have a sticker on it uh, saying so, I think. But uh, now it's it's up there with uh, with the Aero Note with uh, with um, the Wasp Nano with um, uh, with um, yeah with, with the with the best uh, with the best uh, single coil RDAs out there, no doubt about it. So you you decide for yourself what you want to do. Uh, Wendy Way has fantastic other products, and and I have a lot of their RDAs. But uh, this is what you call a, a blunder <laughs> with some sort of serendipity thrown in. <laughs> yeah, man, it's good, but the sound. <laughs> See ya next time.